Okay, here we go. So section 4.3 part 2, we're going to continue looking at trig ratios and we're going to expand a little bit on what we did last time. So with this, the purpose is for this section, we're going to discover when trig ratios are positive and negative and by when I mean which quadrants we're talking about. And we're going to learn how to solve for theta. You've been doing this a little bit already, but we're going to look more in depth at this. So when are things positive or negative? Here's a reminder, sine theta is equal to y, cos theta is equal to x, and tan theta is y divided by x. If I'm looking at sine theta or cosecant, either way, we're looking at either what y is or what one over y is. So if I'm looking at the four quadrants, y is negative when it's below the x-axis and positive when it's above. Cos theta is x, so you're going to have negative on the left, positive on the right. Again, just look at where is x negative, where is x positive. Tan theta, we're going to take y over x. So you need to look at each four different quadrants and divide them and top right, so quadrant one is positive over positive. You get a positive number. If you look at quadrant two, uh, you've got negative x, positive y, so you're gonna get a negative. Negative divided by positive, or sorry, positive divided by negative gives you negative, and so on and so forth. Just as a reminder, these are the four quadrants. I've been using this, but I, I realized I forgot to tell you. Quadrant one is top top, top right, right top right and then top left think of an angle in standard position think of the quadrants that they rotate through as they go around you start off at one and you rotate around to four that's how they decided to number these things solving for theta so here's an equation we want to solve this between zero and two pi so if we look at this 1 over root 2, remember cos is related to the x value, so 1 over root 2 is your x value. So if you looked on the unit circle, this relates to pi over 4. And because it's negative 1 over root 2, we're looking at quadrant 2 and 3. Again, if this is confusing, go back to the previous slide and look at when your, your x value is negative. It's in quadrant 2 and 3. So here's what this would look like on a diagram. So you've got both are in the in quadrant two and three, and we've got theta one and theta two. So we have the reference angle. The reference angle is pi over four. So for quadrant one, we're gonna go pi minus the reference angle to get the angle there. And for theta two, we're gonna do pi plus the reference angle. So these are my two values for theta. And notice it's between 0 and 2 pi, so I'm not going to look for any more coterminal angles because we've found them all in between 0 and 2 pi. Here we've got cotangent theta equals negative root 3. And again, we're looking for what's the solution between 0 and 2 pi. So cotangent theta, this is related to tan theta, and we just take the reciprocal of that. And if we look on the unit circle, 1 over root 3 is related to the, the angle pi over 6. So again, this is our, our reference angle. And because tan theta is negative, we're in quadrant 2 and 4. Again, check the, the third slide if you want to remember where is tan theta negative. And it looks like this. So again, using our knowledge of what the, the, um, the equations are relative to the reference angle in each of these quadrants, we've got this. Theta 1 is pi minus this, or 180 minus this degree. And for theta 2, it's going to be 2 pi minus the reference angle. So these are going to be my two values. Again, we're in between 0 and 2 pi. So these are going to be the only two answers here. 5 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. 
So you're starting to notice a pattern with this, right? I'm just solving this equation for theta, look for the reference angle, look for which quadrant I'm in, and then solve it based on that. So let's solve this. <clears throat> Take the square root, so I get plus or minus one. So I got two cases. Sine theta equals one, in which case I look at my unit circle when sine theta, which is y, is one. That is at the at 90 degrees, that's at my um, positive y-axis. So this is at pi over two. I'm using radians because my, my, um, my range is given in radians. Then I look at the other option, sine theta equals negative one, and I get theta two is three pi over two. However, I need to look at the range. So one, the, uh, the pi over two is in the range, so I can still say theta one is this, but theta two is actually out of the range. This is bigger than pi, so what I need to do is I need to subtract or look for a uh, coterminal angle and subtract two pi from this to go within my range. So negative pi over two, this is actually in the range. So you, you can't just plug in numbers, get the answers. You'll actually have to think with this one. So no more just plugging things into your calculator and being able to get the answer. You'll have to think a little bit about this. So my two angles, pi over two, and negative pi over two. There you go. Now we want the general solution. By general solution, I mean every single possible answer. So this is gonna look at what is our general equation for an angle. First we need to solve this. So secant is one over cos. So by rearranging the equation, we get this. So theta, which this is going to be our reference angle, is going to equal 1.21. Again, reference angle. Be sure you know that. So this is not our solution yet. Because this ratio for cotangent is positive, we're in quadrant 1 and 4. Again, that's because it's related to the x value. So here's what the graph looks like. So I've got two angles there. I've got the red line indicates theta one. I've got the green long circle going around, that is theta two. Theta one is just equal to the reference angle because I'm in quadrant one. Theta two, I need to go two pi minus the reference angle to get 5.08. So these are my two angles in between zero and two pi. But remember I need the general solution, not just this, these two specific points. So taking theta one, it's going to equal 1.21 plus two pi n, where n is an integer. This will give us every single angle in quadrant one that's coterminal to 1.21, and the same for 5.08. So now this, these two values are the general solutions for secant theta equals two. Let's try it again for this one. Notice this time we got a range that's in degrees. So I'm no longer doing this in radians, I just want degrees. And it's a specific solution, it's not a general solution, we got specific. So this says given cos theta equals this, we want to solve for cotangent theta. So first we need to look at what is cos theta? It's equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So from this I can get two things. My adjacent term is root five. My hypotenuse is seven. Again, just looking at the fraction. And because cos theta is negative, we're looking at a quadrant two and three. So here's our diagram. We've got two angles, or sorry, two triangles with the same reference angle in there. But I actually don't need that reference angle. You could get it and get an answer from there. That would be up to you but this one is gonna give you an exact answer. So using Pythagoras, we can solve for what y is. Not too bad, it's plus or minus square root of 44. From this, uh, well, 
with your knowledge of cotangent theta equals one over theta, and the fact that tan theta is opposite over adjacent, cotangent theta is adjacent over opposite. So in looking at the, at the triangles here, adjacent is negative root five, the opposite is just what we solve for, plus or minus square root 44. So plug those in, simplify it a little bit. We just get cotangent theta is plus or minus square root five over square root 44. So that's gonna be your answer for this. There's, there's two solutions for this. Now let's try this. Again, it says use exact values. So we're gonna to have to use what the strategy we used before. And we're looking at the angle and standard position purely in quadrant four. So that eliminates some things for us. So first let's look at the, the inverse cosine equation here. So this is actually my theta, the angle. So cos theta is gonna equal 0 0.8, which is four over five. Again, because this is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, we have adjacent is four, hypotenuse is five. We just said. And looking at this in quadrant four, we get this triangle. And again, we just need to solve for what y is. Because we need that in order to do tan theta. So use Pythagoras. We get y equals plus or minus square root nine. Again, just do some algebra. When you take the square root, you get plus or minus. Now, because we're told we're in quadrant four, the y value needs to be negative. So that's why I got rid of the positive, is because we're told we're in quadrant four. If we didn't say we're in quadrant four, I would have to use plus or minus. But we're, we're restricted to that quadrant. So putting these back into tangent equation, we get tan theta equals negative three over four. And that would be our answer. So that's the end of 4.3. Hopefully you understand how to solve some equations with tan, cosine, sine, and all the reciprocals of that, and being able to get theta. So this will take a little bit of practice. That's why there's lots of different examples that I did in the notes here. And I tried to um, show you a little bit how to do that. And there you go. So we got one last section after this. All right, so for my random fact for this lesson, this one's a practical in a weird sort of way. So did you know that if you drop a penny from high enough, it could actually kill someone? That's right, a penny falling, they reach something called a terminal velocity, and at terminal velocity, it could kill someone. So pennies are kind of like your 25 cent piaster thingies. 25 cent? 25 piaster? 25 piaster pieces. You drop them from a high enough point, it could kill someone. Look up terminal velocity, you'll see what I mean. I hope they didn't test this to figure this out. I'm assuming some time scientists are like, what could we drop to kill someone? But in theory, because they wanted to know for a friend. So that's your random fact for this lesson.